Yo, what's going on, people? This is HD Ben Dope, and this is Ben Dope Speaks. On this season, we'll be discussing broken dreams and how it relates to each of our guests. On today's episode, JD. Alright. So, here we are today with an episode of the Broken Dreams Stories or the Broken Dreams Podcast. I don't know. We still got to come up with a name for this. Um, my name is H.D. Ben Dope, by the way. Um, and this is a podcast pretty much just centered around my project, Broken Dreams, that dropped May 1st, 2020. Right. And what I want to be doing with this podcast is giving y'all more of an in-depth look behind the meanings of these songs and how it relates to people because that was the most important thing for me making this project was how much conversation can come based on these records so being that that's the most important thing I wanted to you know kind of step into the podcast world and show y'all that these are you know real stories based on these uh records and shit like that so today we got one of the homies one of the members of the team I'm members of the family. We got JD, Mr. J Doucet. How yeah. You doing, Hello, people. How you doing? That's my professional voice. You good, you good. How you feeling today? Let us know. Like I'm exuberant. You know the vibes. How you feeling, man? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I feel um a little a little lethargic, but still good. Still Didn't good. Did you eat Popeyes? No, nah, I didn't even have anything. I I I, I'll talk to you about it later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a little while. But um, so today, I I kind of just want to you know dive a little bit into your story, your background, and um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about one of the records and how it possibly relates to your life. Um, so first off, just let the people know who you are and you know, damn, why why niggas should even give a fuck. Yo, you know I hate these things because like I'm so I'm so low key, but I'm not. I, I mean, I get it. But I know you, you are, but I got you though. Um, you can let them know you're a brand ambassador, fashion over model, uh, <laughs> fit te- yo, whatever the you know what I mean. Come on, talk your shit. Yo, what? So we, we spoke about that's the fashion over doing? model thing, man. Anyways, that's um, wait. You don't do fashion over? No- whatever. Go ahead. Nah, we, I don't do fashion over, bro. Come on, we don't do that. Nah. So basically, I mean, I guess. You wanna go by titles, manager, cool. That's like cool stuff. Um, I I I help people, aka consult people. Um, and you know, shit like that. Word. Alright, fair enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> before we get into the record, I want to go back into how we met because oh, I Jesus. think it is a, a funny story, and I feel like it should be documented somewhere. So. Give your account of the situation, and then I'm gonna give give my backstory. All right, my 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 my. All right, so my story of HD, it actually go back to like 2015. Like I heard his stuff. Um, damn, I forgot the song right now. Blanked out, whatever. Seeing stuff on YouTube, and I'm like, damn, it was peas, uh, two peas joint. Two peas. Two yeah. Peas, yeah. And I'm like, damn, this shit's hard. But I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. I'm like, I'm a fan. So I was a fanboy first. I'm like, I'm looking, I'm listening to his music, like, constantly. I'm like, damn, like, when the hell he gonna have a show? Like, I want to go to a show. Um, whatever. You know, you wasn't really good at social media. So I'm pretty sure you had a show in, like, 2015. So I remember in 2016, uh, um, it was, like, that show at SOB's with Gashi. Funny enough, so the homie Quest, he, um, he was working with Gashi at the time. So I'm like, oh, shit. I'm double valid, because, like, I go there. I'm like, oh, shit, man, HD on the bill. Because he sent me the fly, actually. That's how I peeped that, like, you performing. So I'm like, right, I'm, I got to pull up on dude. And I was just really on some, like, nah, like, I wanted to help, whatever, just because, like, nah, like, I need, I need your shit. Can I curse? I can curse. I should know this. Go, go crazy. Go crazy. Go curse. All right. Um, damn. That just messed up my job. Anyways. What are you talking about? You could curse. Oh, I could curse. Yes. Oh, all right. Cool. So I'm like, yeah, nah, like, I, I need this nigga's music, like, everywhere. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the show. I'm going to just introduce myself, whatever. Be a fanboy. So I came to the show. <laughs> and then, like, I'm downstairs in the green room, and I'm the HD, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, nah. This ain't the dude I was listening to. <laughs> like, he's just sitting there. 
I'm speaking about him like you not right there. Well, you're just sitting there and on the couch and you just chilling like regular. I'm like, son, I'm expecting like a rapper and you just like a regular person. <laughs> so I'm hot. I'm like, son, what? I'm like, nah, this don't make no sense. I'm like, this show about to be so ass. And if you know me, anybody that know me, like I always, I just, cause everybody want to be like the best so much. And I'm just like, bro, you got to like prove yourself. So at old rip, I'm like, oh, this show about to be ass. I'm like, all right, whatever. But I'm here, so I'm here. Cool. So now it's time for you to go up. And then it's like, it's like, I always remember this account, like when, when people talk about Beyonce performing, it's like the whole fucking, like, it was different. It's like the, the, like the place went dark. And then it's a <laughs> whole different personality came across. It was like, like, you know how Beyonce goes by Sasha Fierce when she's performing? I don't know mm-hmm. what your name is yet, but I know me and you, we just say, like, the, the, the evil in you just comes out, and it was just like... You said the evil nigga? Yeah, the evil in you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just like, hold up, what the fuck? Who is this person? Nah. Like, I was a fanboy, but now I'm, like, a super fan. Like, like, <laughs> like nah, I got to work with boys. Because at the time, I was working for, like, entertainment lawyers. So I'm like, so I'm like... I'm like, nah, like, yeah, I definitely got working boy now. Like, I have to. Like, crazy. Like, this is like the male Beyonce. So, <laughs> boom. But, yo, I feel like I introduced myself already. I don't really remember that part. I talk a lot, even though I'm low key. So, I was like, all right, take my number. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you tomorrow. Like, super industry shit. I'm mad at that shit now, but whatever. So, <laughs> oh, so that was my account. And then, I. Uh, that was that. Like, it's more to the story, but that was that was like the first interaction with HD, and it, it it was cool because you know what I mean I felt like you from Brooklyn, so I was just like, oh shit, like and then oh, and then when you told me like you live in the nineties, I was really mad because I'm like, damn, like you really said that shit, but you really are from the nineties, and I'm like, so you really from mm-hmm. like up the block? Cause you know people be talking shit, but like, right, right, so they don't really be really from, or sometimes or like they like, yeah, I'm from Flatbush, or like I'm from East Flatbush, but like I'm. I really live in like East New York or whatever, but when you like actually right. live in now, I was like, "Oh damn, you right right there!" Like, nigga, I go get jerk chicken from right there. So, Facts. yeah, Facts. so that was that's my account. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, leaving off where, well, starting where you left off. So JD gives me his number at that show, right? But you and probably some other people, I don't know. People gave me their numbers at that show. Mm-hmm. So you hit me up and you was like, yo, let's hit uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, like talking shit. We go to Buffalo Wild Like you text me like, ah, boom, I'm here. I, I was Buffalo Wild Wings on Atlantic. And I got to, <laughs> to Buffalo Wild Wings and I seen you sitting at the table and I was like, oh, it was this nigga? I didn't even know that I was going to meet with you. <laughs> like, I just knew that like it was somebody from the show but i think i thought you were somebody else right so yeah that was that was a whole different thing but um yeah that was pretty much how we ended up linking up and everything and you know just through being homies and shit like that just made sense for jd to you know play the manager position just because again just homies and shit like that so what i want to dive into today is this record that is on a project called die with me right so Die With Me is a record that stems from, okay, so I have home, I had a homegirl, right? And she was telling me about me being on stage. She was like, I don't know how you can do that. Like if I had to go up on stage and, you know, be in front of people like that, I would die, right? And when I heard that, I was like, damn, that's interesting. Like, cause obviously her speaking on, I would die is a hyperbole. Right. But that's the same way I feel about, damn, if I had to clock in, to a job that I don't necessarily care about. Not saying that she's doing a job that she doesn't care about, but right. like the idea of the clock in is something that I would quote unquote die from. Right. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make a record that pretty much shows both sides of these worlds, which I deem as freedom and success. Cause obviously, you know, you, you can start off on either path, but it's about trying to get to the other path in the middle of that shit so it's like if you start off i want to be the person that has the freedom which means you know making your own schedule doing what you want kind of when you want to do it 
your goal is to get to security, mm -hmm. right? And then people that start off with security is like, I'm going to go get the job. I'm going to go set it up. Your goal is to eventually get to freedom, which is, which is why people, you know, get jobs early based on the incentives. Right. Like pensions and things like that. It's because it's about getting to freedom. Yeah, 20 for 20. I'm that, going that, to, that. Right. I'm going to work all these years and eventually I'm going to be able to have all the money and just do whatever the fuck I want to do. So we're both sides are trying to get to where the other side is. It's just a matter of where you choose to start it. So Die With Me is a joint that reflects on the freelancer. Like it's essentially spoken from the nine to five world, speaking to the freelancer and telling them you should come join my side. Now, the reason why, again, it's titled Die With Me is because it's from that conversation. Right. Well, she had. shorty said, you know, if I was saying stage. I would die if I had to mm -hmm. get on stage. So it's me kind of flipping that and being like, OK, well, I would die. That side of the world is death. Mm -hmm. quote um and the record is from the nine to five worker talking to the freelancer basically telling them like yo look at all the shit that you have to go through because people talk about being the entrepreneur the freelancer whatever like it's so great like oh yo you you just make your own schedule right. oh you do what you want to do why would you go clock in why would you want to deal with that stress all of this shit right mm -hmm. but people never talk about what you really got to go through in order to be that freelance person like right. there's a lot of doubt that comes with it you you gotta freaking look at your friends on the other side of the world kind of checking off the boxes and you know in the freelancer world there isn't necessarily a Bro, this, set path on how to check off the box yeah, there is you know no I mean? type of like real plan and you look like a bum for a lot of years it gets That's, nasty it's a nasty emotional roller coaster a thousand percent emotional roller coaster and that, that's why I wanted to really dive into that with that record, like really show that, yo, this side of the tracks is not this great, you know, I'm just doing what I want, I'm making money right. side of it. I really wanted to uh, talk about that in the lyrics, and that's why the whole verse is done like that. But at the same time, it's not glorifying the other side of the world because it's looking at the other side of the world as death. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I fuck with that record because it's not glorifying either side and it's real in the middle like real observant right uh, it's like much. it's like it's like basically that kid that's like 18 looking at like both sides like you have to yeah, pitch exactly. like all right which way should i go right 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 so with that you've obviously been somebody that's had how many jobs have you had in your life Dog, i don't even know like <laughs> no, i mean I like i know number. but i i mean outside of industry jobs yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about clocking yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like that like realistically I like consistent two jobs. No, I'm not three. It was Chase, left Chase. That's when I was like, that's that was my moment of like, man, fuck this. I'm out. Like I'm really about to pursue my dreams. That was 2014. And then like this this is an exclusive. Like niggas don't even know I had this, but I was a teacher for like sub teacher. Sorry, not even teacher, sub teacher for like was that a year, two years? I don't remember. Whatever, I don't know. We would just put it as some number. So that was that. And then I was doing that other shit, that office job for that project manager shit. And then, yeah, that shit was trash. That shit was beyond trash. So three jobs. And I died. Literally, I died. <laughs> you died. Yeah, my soul <laughs> my soul was nasty. My hair was, was OD, nappy. Like, my skin got ashy. It was just bad. It was bad. All right. So you being some, did you know that the entrepreneur entrepreneur lifestyle was your move from early or did you figure that out later on absolutely like i mean because like my mother and stuff they put oh you got to get a job in college in the third like it was just like all right this is like in the back of my head so i thought okay this is what i gotta do but not nah, since like 12 years old like i knew i was supposed to be an entrepreneur i knew i was supposed to work for myself Copy, since 12. like yeah like junior high sometime around that since junior high so you graduated college, right? You mm -hmm. graduated from St. John's. Yes, sir. Shout out to J. Um, Cole, man. Shout out to <laughs> alumni from St. John's. In fact, shout out to Cole. Um, but how soon after your graduation did you get your first job out of college? Mm, you talking industry job? That was no, nah, no. Nah, I'm talking oh, about regular clocking job. job. Everything's clocking. Oh, everything. Oh, you just on clocking. I right, not even passion. Yeah. Mm, to be honest. My 
when I quote unquote left the industry was like 2016 or some shit like that. I forgot. But that was like my actual first job. That teaching job was actually my first job after college. Because after that, that's okay. when I was like, I pivoted into the industry. Like I had an internship and I was just working in the industry. Shout out to Joe. Shout out to Ed. Word, word, word. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, wait. So you were, you were working in the industry before the teaching stuff? I bet. So working in the industry and clearly this is, this is, is like exclusive by the way you really getting exclusive and you only getting this because you're my brother <laughs> niggas don't even know come this. on man niggas don't even know but I you're, so you're this working book, in the bro. industry right mm -hmm. this is clearly your passion it's something right. that you you want to be a part of right and what happens that it gets to a point where it's like all right i gotta go get this teaching job what what was that process like the lady that that gave birth to me <laughs> so like, it was more so just pressure yeah it was just like all right you getting older now and then student loans are starting to hit and then you just like all right damn like you know i was I was working with ari lennox and shit before and it's just like all right money ain't really coming like you like you don't really know how to figure it out because like you're trying to go for your dreams when you don't want shit to deter you and just like all right how do i take care of that but then like still do that and it's just like in the moment you just be mm -hmm. cussed as fuck. And you just like, all right, I don't know what to do. So fuck it. I'm going to just take the easy way. Like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to just go get a job. Because, you know, the noise is outside. And you just hearing it all the time. And it just fucks you up. So it's like, fuck it. Let me just go get this job and keep it pushing. Like, I'll figure it out. But, you know, I'll figure it out. Got you. All right. So you get your teaching job. Now, me being there for some of this shit, I understand where that kind of... uh started to deter you almost a little bit you know what i'm saying kind of threw you off track so you being in this system that you knew i don't want to be here that was already like in your mindset but the money was good was it not no it was consistent though it was all right that's it it was consistent it wasn't good but it was right consistent. and that, that's what i mean by good because gotcha. i was a freelancer you don't know when your next check i'm not gonna lie yeah like initially i haven't it was probably three to four years since I was able to get like a bi-weekly check or whatever. So I'm like, oh shit, this is what it feel like. Oh, this is right, great. Right. Cause you know, like I, right, every two weeks I'm gonna get a check. Whereas, you know, net 30, net 60, net 90 or going to roll. Like it's so weird. Like the payments is different, but when you get a check, yeah. you get a big check. So it was just like, oh shit, I get 1500 or whatever every two weeks lit. So yeah, in that regard, yeah, it was good. Right, right, right. <laughs> Obviously, in that case, the money wasn't worth all the shit that it came with. Right. But that was one of the positives, just being able to, I, I could put my hand in my pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can move when I want to move type of deal. Exactly. Right? So, at what point did you notice, like, the positives, aka okay, the money, is not worth it? Like, what was that feeling like? What was the moment? Damn. This feel like, I feel like I'm on, I'm on Red Table so with Jada and Pink and Snip. <laughs> what the fuck? I might shit a motherfucking chair, nigga. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, I think, unknowingly, like, the first three, maybe five months was cool. Because I was in a school that I was like, all right, I fuck with y'all. Like, kids was cool. And I really wasn't doing shit. Like, I was just literally, I was really, like, the cool sub. Like, I was wearing Yeezys to work and, like, the kids loved it. And you just talk, like, regular, like, hood shit. You know what I mean? We talk music, whatever. Yeah. Cause obviously like the teaching I did, so they not doing work, and I'm just like, I remember what it was like to be in high school. I was like, I'm like, what well, at this point five, maybe, sorry, seven years max out. So I was like, I remember what this is like, whatever. So I think the next, no, at the end of that year when I had to do like a whole course to go back, and then it was like it took some time, and then I had to go back, and I'm in another another school. That's when I was like, oh hell no. I was like, yeah, this shit ain't it. Because it's like, hold up, I'm wasting, like, you would think going to work from, like, 7 to 3 or 8 to 3, whatever the case is, like, I'll come back home and have time. But then I realized, damn, I'm getting, like, I'll be tired after work. I'm like, why am I so tired? Like, yeah. I just didn't have the ability to do things. I didn't feel like going out to events no more. I just got tired. I'm like, nah, this ain't it. But like I said, not so I got to the other school when I was like, oh, hell no. Like, my soul really felt, like, so drained as fuck. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this ain't, this ain't, this ain't fulfillment. Like, this ain't it. Like, I'm like, damn, like, I want to go back. But then I was just like, how do I go back, for real? You feel me? 
And then, you know, that's when you was like, you was just doing your video shit. So it was like, all right, well, you know, you figure it out. Yeah. No, 100%. Right. 100%. I think around that time, there was something that you said, because I think there is this idea of discipline, right? Mm-hmm. And ironically, another song on the project next time is kind of about that. Right. That discipline, just being able to have the discipline to, all right, if I got to go to work for X amount of hours, I come home and then I get all my passion projects done, right? That's right. just on face value. It's just like, yo, why wouldn't you be able to do it? Look, Easier you can break it down to sure. math. There's how many hours in a day, you, how many hours in a week you could spend time doing this, that, and the third, right? Mm. And that's kind of how it is on face value. But I remember specifically around that time, you said something to me and it was... um people talk about, you know, having the time to do things, you know what I mean? Putting time aside, but they don't factor in the, like the energy, essentially the enthusiasm that you have to do it. Like if you go in somewhere and you, it's draining your energy, then you won't like, you can have all the time in the world, but if you're drained, you're not able to produce nah, in the ass. manner that you should. That shit is a different type. Like those people right there is a different beat that could really like go to work and then come home and still do their passion. Because, like, unless you kind of like your job, yeah. you really just be like, fuck it. I'm not even going to lie. you just like, fuck it. Right. Over. Nah, and I, I felt that shit because, and it's always been something that, like, I kind of resonate with in terms of making sure that I'm keeping my, my energy right. Regardless of how much, because in anything that you do, there's going to be shit that, you know, you don't necessarily care for. You, mm-hmm. You're just always going to be having to do things that you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it's very important to keep that energy and keep balance of that enthusiasm so that you can keep going in the things that you want to do. Because I think it's very easy for you to live inside of what you don't want to do that it starts to affect all the things that you do want to do. Nah, you know what I mean? And now you're just kind of slowly drowning in both worlds because you're in a world that's giving you the benefits uh but you don't want to be there and now the world that you're trying to create for yourself you're essentially abandoning it in a, in a way slowly you know? but surely right 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 so I, I do feel like that that's a very important thing to uh take note of is to make sure that you know you maintain your energy and do things positive to keep your spirits up Right, because the way you explain that soul, your soul was almost empty. Like that's that's nah, a dude. Wild like place you really just in. you just over shit. Like you just, I was just really irritable because I mean, you're just not doing what you want to do, and it just it really right. just gets to you. Like for real, it's just right. like, yo, this ain't it, and it's and it's it's different if you working alongside what you do, like like beans, like he. Like, he working alongside entertainment. So, it's like, all right, you still doing what you do. But it's like, nigga, I'm working in a school with kids. And, like, you got people in my head talking about, yeah, just, you know, you, you should really do this. Like, you good with the kids and this and the third. Then sure. you kind of start thinking about that shit. Like, maybe I should. You're like, yeah. hold up, 80000 Like, the money be sounding good. And then even down to, like, yeah, you could be a coach and you could make an extra 1500 on top. Like, the money just starts sounding so good. But then, then you just get caught up because you really just like now you back at that pitchfork. But right, all right. You know, like this is not what I want to do. But you getting older and you start looking at Father Tom and all that weird shit. Yeah, because I, I think just with what I was saying earlier in terms of everybody on either start of the the fence, which is either freedom or security, whichever place you start, you want to get to the other side at some point. Mm-hmm. And I think the longer you're on the road, if people kind of pop up with opportunities because again, you're trying to get to the other side. So like you kind of working towards that. And now there's like something that pops up and it's like, yo, X amount of dollars, Mm -hmm. the dollars essentially relate to freedom. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you hear that, you're like, Oh shit. Well, maybe I, this is my time to go get that, that security. Mm -hmm. I mean, pardon the dollars uh, are security in this sense. Sorry. The consistent money. Um, so maybe it's like, this is my time to go get that security. But I think there is uh, a side where it's like, you kind of have to really live through your full trail. Right. Like, so if you're starting on freedom, you have to really live through that before you can get to the security. Right. But, you know, being that there is so much difficulty on, on, on along that road, you kind of want to jump to the security side as, as quickly as possible. Right. Um. So it, with, where you're at now, right? You're clearly in a place where it's like, yo, I've, I've been there. 
it really wore me down. How do you respond moving forward with all of the uh, trials and tribulations of being on the freedom side? Because we're still in a place where we're trying to build, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So we're not necessarily at, at our 20K a show. Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, place man, 40K, that we, top we're of really... 2021. Holla at me, man. Holla at me for the, for the Air Force, you heard? Right. We, we not in that place. Fucking increase in my, in my we... bio. <laughs> Come on, you need 40K. He said 20K right. on, on the second track. He's doing 40 now. But, um, <laughs> nah, I mean, now, like, being that I was there before, and sometimes, like, it's weird, but sometimes you got to go to that really dark, dark place to, like, know I'm never ever ever going back like i even thank god now i remember talking to you over the summer like damn though i think i might just do this just because of bread but like i know like going in this time i knew all right i'm not this is not for nothing like i'm just here for the money i'm gonna keep it pushing yeah. but then it was just like i'm not even gonna do that like i just gotta like really if i'm gonna do this i gotta really just jump in and just do this and i'm gonna figure it out and i mean god willing like i've been good like right, money right. just been afloat and like it's like I figured out how to just live within my means and just really figure out how to do the money thing. And that was my problem before because it was like, I love this, but I had habits, aka sneakers and fancy bourgeoisie things. That was just like, <laughs> shout out to Sonya, God rest the day. But like, you got a cousin thing, you want you want to keep that up, you know what I mean? So that's, of course. Hence, I also was like, nah, I gotta get bread. Like, I gotta get some money because I didn't want to like do like, you know, street shit or whatever. So, yeah. Now it's like, all right, I know how to live within my means. You know what I mean? Get back to like my, my high school days of like, all right, figure out how to just get money, whatever. And now I'm good. Like it's mad. Like l- luckily we live in New York City, which is like, like Colin would say, the gig com- gig economy, whatever, that like you could just pick up a gig and make money. Like you just picked up a camera and I started making money. Feel me? Right. So it was mad different ways to make money. So like, it's like, now it's like, right, I'm never going back to doing that because that's a dub. Take so much of my time. And I just, overall, I know my work. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I'm not going to put my, Like, this is a path I'm destined for since young. And I'm staying here. Like, I'm not I'm not letting that that soul die. Again. Like, my soul happy. Man. You see, I have my hair growing as thick as, you know what I mean? Real nice. <laughs> you know just mean? yeah. <laughs> Kelsey do his thing, man. But <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Shout out to Kelsey for sure. Um, Yeah, so, in, in all in total i would want to say that this is not something to uh kind of degrade nine to five workers this is more so degrading people that are in systems that they their soul is not like it's it's affecting their soul because i think that's the the biggest thing like everybody has negatives in their life but i think when it gets to a point that that negative is starting to weigh you down and it's starting to affect all of the uh you know positive areas of your life mm-hmm. i think that's when you know it's a, a real issue and i feel like for you working those jobs it became a real issue because it started to dampen your mood in general you know what i'm saying and, and so the thing about that not to cut you off my bad but like yeah. You don't even realize that shit, which is the crazy part. You just going day by day, just know you got to get a dollar. But I know there's a lot of people out there now that's not even happy with their job, but they just doing it because they have to. But it's right. like that shit slowly but surely killing them on the inside. But they don't even realize because you so wrapped into it, just, you know, got to get the dollar. I got to survive. It's going the third. But that shit killing people, dog. No, 100%. And to to show the other side, just because I, I don't want it to seem like such a, you know, damper on the nine to five. Oh, world. yeah. Let's, let's talk the, about the equivalent is, you know, you see so many celebrities that are kind of running the ringer and, you know, there's a lot of suicides in that world because right. so there are people that are in front of people kind of giving their life to people uh, and just being in front of cameras and all that thing, all these things. But they don't necessarily want that. You know what I'm saying? And. Once they realize that this is not what I want, that's why you have so much depression among celebrities right. and things like that and suicide and all these things. That's where it comes from. So it's this conversation is more about not letting your soul die in something that you're not that's right. no longer self serving. You're, right. you're doing it to uh appease somebody. So in your case you were trying to make sure like, all right, my mom's not looking at me crazy. Let me check off these boxes and you know, and then there's 
and on the other side, certain celebrities that are like, I need to uh, continue doing these shows, continue doing whatever it is because I can't let the fans down. I can't let my people around me down. Like there, it works on both sides. And the sole purpose of this conversation conversation is to make sure that you don't allow your soul to die in whatever it is that you're doing in order to please other people. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. Right. Um, yeah, so you, you want to brush up this, on like the hardships of the freelance world too? Oh, he, I mean, he, shit. We 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 could definitely dive into that. You know what? Let let's actually talk about that. Give me, give me what you feel like the hardest thing of the freelancer world is. Son, the hardest thing about the freelancer too. Hardest thing about the freelancer is. Low key, never really know where your next check is coming from, so you always on the hunt. But luckily for me, like, I love that shit. Like, it's like it's always a hustle. You know what I mean, some people love it, some people hate it. It's bad and good. And like, the sacrifice you gotta make, like, you know, your friends that that are working a regular nine to five, they going on vacations and a third. He's like, well, uh, I gotta let you know. Like, I don't know where money, mm -hmm. my, my money gonna be. Like, or you gotta like work twice as hard just to do like regular shit. But other than that, it's like the perks you get sometimes, it don't even add up to the bread you get. You just, like, people think you live this lit, lavish life. And it's like, bro, like, I really remember fucking up, going to Miami, nigga, Puff mm -hmm. blew me out. No, fuck, that's what I said. Puff blew me out on some assistant shit. Like, like just like, sort of like this show, but not this show. Like, all right, come be my assistant, whatever. So I'm staying in the Mondrian. Like you made him walk to Brooklyn to get cheesecake or no? I had to bring on cheesecake, but that's, <laughs> it's, it's more. It's a lot of stories I got. I did have to do some wacky shit, not some <laughs> freaky deaky, but like it was like I don't wait, know what story. Wait, what? No, because it, 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 I said some wild shit. I had to pause that. So, but right, copy, it, copy. it was it was a similar cheesecake like story. But no, the Miami story is probably my favorite story because that's the actual story that fucked me up too. But. So get flew out, flown out. Sorry, flew out. I was gonna say flew out. Get flew out to my out the city, girls. You got flew out. Copy. Come on, JT, my sister. So, <laughs> so in the Mondrian, nice ass hotel. His whole staff is there, and then you know he's like, all right, come to his house, whatever, whatever. You go to his house. He's like, God damn, like this nigga really rich. Like you know what I mean? Right, it's right. different from like seeing it on TV and like third. To like, oh shit, now nah, this nigga's really rich. Like, he's really like rich, rich, like wealthy rich. So that you do that now, you around all these rich people, it's on the third, and then you just, and I could just come back home to fucking East Flatbush, and I'm like, oh damn. Like, <laughs> this is my life is like, like this is, this is reality now. Like, you live, you live your dream for the weekend, now come back home to reality. It is not you, you come back home to like your friends calling you about like, regular shit and your mom asking you to fucking take out the garbage and wash dishes yeah. it's like yo what <laughs> so like you have moments of like super duper litness and you come back to reality and it's like yo this ain't it this can't be my life and right and now you still have to figure out how to make the lit shit consistent right how, how do i make sure i can always end up in puff crib right every exactly. other weekend exactly <laughs> Cause you like, yeah. well, this nigga like he like you get to his crib, and nigga got like the little like not even like the hospital footy things, but like real socks. You gotta take your shoes off, and you like, what kind of rich shit is this? Like, <laughs> nah, that's hard. Yeah, Damn, that's fire. Shout out to Puff. That's like, hard, bro. The wood is a different type of African jungle wood. Like, shit is just different. And you just come home to your hardwood floors from Home Depot, and it's just like, <laughs> yo, this ain't life, dog. So like uh, that in itself, that's why I go back to just the emotions you go through. Where like, ah, right, you feel like you about to hit the top, and it's like, oh nah, nigga, like you right back to where you was. Like work harder, work harder. Yeah. Like forever, you just gotta keep working hard, and you just never really know when something is gonna pop or like when anything is just. You just gotta keep going. For sure. So yeah, I I definitely would say that's one of the more difficult parts about being a freelancer is that head down mentality because mm -hmm. you kind of just always have to. Just keep working, even if you're not seeing uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's one of the harder parts of the the freelance world because as a if you're if you're working a job right, 
and you know you you're working every day blah 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 your check is essentially that's like oh that's the benefit you know right. what i mean even if you're you're on track to get a promotion like that's your focus i want right, to get promoted exactly. you're still able to get that check coming in so it's like all right cool i have some type of like uh gratification like i'm seeing some type of reward from this in the freelancer world that that struggle of all right i'm working i'm working and it's not doing anything nothing's right. hitting you know what I mean? But I, you still got to keep working because it's like, well, tomorrow could be the day. Right. You feel me? And I think that uncertainty that uh, comes with the freelancer world is something you got to be mentally you gotta strong be, you to gotta deal You got to be a with. fucking crazy person. Yeah, to be <laughs> honest, you're you're a thousand percent right. Because I said m- mentally strong, but I think you got to be a little mentally unstable. You, like, to and, be I mean, very we talk about this you, all bro. the time. Like, you, we really some crazy niggas. Like yeah, like <laughs> so, so anybody that really like pursues anything where it's like you really passionate and it's like in a freelance world, like you slightly different, cause like you really don't know. You could really I, and shout out to the rappers like 30, 35 years old still talking about yeah I'm putting out my mixtape now. And it's like damn yeah. dog, but like that persistence is different because you just never know when you really gonna hit. And like even with you, like prior to me meeting you, I think you had what two, three, three mixtapes out by then. Yeah. yeah right and i mean like it did numbers but it was like i mean you really you came around the time like joey badass and like the whole era and i'm pretty sure you're looking at them like damn dog like am yeah. i about to get my I mean, I, I, that's that's another thing that comes with it too because you have to watch people mm-hmm. ascend and that that's you know obviously people that's doing the same thing as you and then also you got your friends because i remember when i 2016 came like which is you know a whole backstory of peace be the journey was dealing with the time mm-hmm. you know it's me working on all this music for all these years i remember coming out of high school and being like yo i'm about to drop this mixtape i'm about to go to europe i'm blowing the fuck up right mm-hmm. that, that was my whole shit right and then it's four years later and my homies are graduating college now mm-hmm. you know what i mean people coming back going to get real fucking jobs and all this shit and I'm still trying to get this shit off the ground. Yeah, nigga still in his like, bedroom, same spot. Right. <laughs> Living in the bro. same crib, making this music, you know what I mean? Like, still doing these same things and I'm like, damn, well, if I spent this time doing this, trying to get it off the ground and you niggas clearly have, like, steps that we can see because, you know, the diploma is kind of, I mean, the degree, pardon, is looked at as like, yo, you made it. You know what I mean? You you hit one of these levels. You leveled up essentially, and there's not that inside of this music shit. Like there is that. I think getting you know maybe a deal is that or selling out tour, whatever. These there's little things, but at that point I didn't receive any of it. Right. So it was this feeling of like, damn, none of this shit worked. All my friends is leveling right. up, and I gotta still figure this shit out. And I think with that comes a lot of doubt you know what i mean and for sure to have that much doubt and still be like all right yeah but i'm gonna keep going <laughs> is where that crazy shit comes yeah. in because it's like yeah. dog this shit ain't really making no sense right at this point i'm pretty sure your friends are looking at you like so you gonna get a job or like <laughs> they're looking at you crazy like oh you know we, we left high school now you could give up right right and you know it's wild because as shit is starting to happen, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we're, we're kind of, like, ending up on, you know, just different platforms. I'm seeing people kind of come around and, you know, celebrate it. But being that I know we're still in the getting it off the ground stages, mm-hmm. it's still, like, there's almost this resurgence of, oh, shit, I'm on the clock again. You know what I mean? Because I, I think in, in the freelance world, it's kind of like, People see you jump into it. It's like, okay, cool. He's on that journey. Mm -hmm. And there's like, oh, let's see what he's about to do. Right? And then, which is when you get your friends that's like, oh, shit. They listening to all your music. They're sharing. They're they're just doing all the, like, we're about to see this person off on his journey. Right. And then when it kind of doesn't happen in a timely manner, people kind of fizzle out. People just, you know, life happens with people. So they just start focusing on other shit. And... Now that shit is in a place where it's like we're starting to, you know, just be put on different platforms yeah. that have notoriety. 
I'm seeing those same people kind of come back around like, oh shit, yo, you, you about like keep doing your thing. Right. But it, it feels the same thing of like, all right, yeah, we watching you again. Like, let's let's see if it happens in a timely manner. And I think now I'm in a more equipped to deal with that kind of pressure because I it doesn't necessarily affect me, but but it did back initially then, it though. was yeah, back yeah. then it was in a place of like, all right, word, niggas is looking oh, yeah, I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it. And then when it didn't happen, the, when I thought it would happen, it was like, nigga, that shit was uh, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> like, that's a weird thing to deal with, dog. Because then, it, yo, have you ever seen... Uh, You you watch My Wife and Kids? Of course. Favorite, well, one of my favorite shows. All right. Well, I don't know if you remember this episode, but there was an episode where Michael thought he was going to win this award, oh, right? Oh, thanks. I saw that episode not too long ago. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so though, essentially, so for people listening, he thinks he's going to win this award. Like, dude is, like, winking at him, whatever, like, t- when they're talking about N- Nigga had Tourette's or some shit like that, right? Right, right, right. So he goes and he tells, like, his family he's going to win his award. He tells all the people at his job he's going to win Nigga this wrote award. Speech. And uh, they they go to announce the award, and then the dude says Michael, and he says somebody else's last name. So he's, like, Michael Kyle gets up, and he's, like, mad excited and all this shit. And finally realizes that he was not the one that won the award. And for the rest of the episode, he was like walking in places. So like in his house at his job and he would hear the people in the place laughing Mm -hmm. and he would just always assume that it's about him. Right. You know what I mean? Like it was just this essentially internal pressure of like, oh man, I look crazy for everybody. And you know, they weren't even talking about him, but it's that feeling. And that's what that shit felt like for me when it was like, after all this time passed, the homies come back from school and shit ain't pop off the way I thought it was. It was like, damn, I know everybody just looking at me like, yo, what the <laughs> fuck is he doing? Oh my God, this is her. Yeah. But and a lot of times you realize like that's not even what people thinking. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Because there is this side of the freelance world that is intriguing to everybody, which is kind of like, oh shit. Because things are still happening. I think when... When you're in a place of shit isn't where I want it to be, you kind of ignore how far you came. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of the people that aren't close to it can just see how much you've grown. And they're like, oh, shit. Like, wow, you're doing this now. You're doing that now. And, you know, you might see that as regular. Like, even in your position, I feel like you're probably at the point where going to listening parties ain't really that crazy to you. Right? Yeah, but I'm sure people see you walking into certain rooms and it's like, oh shit, JD doing this, he doing that. Yeah, but for you, it's like I've been doing this. Like, it, yeah, you're kind of jaded to that shit. But you know, people can see that there is some type of excitement, there's some type of growth in that. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to it's usually not as um analytical like people aren't analyzing the same way you are on yourself you for know? sure and that's something i had to we we definitely are kind of hard on ourselves and i mean i think it's just but that's just a human thing right i mean i, I feel like that shit is necessary for growth you know right. what i mean you have to really analyze what you're doing how you're doing it so that you can grow from that because if you're if you don't like something that's going on and you're kind of just like passively going about it i feel like you never really address the those issues now obviously the same thing i was saying in terms of the whole job thing like when it when those negative things start to affect the positive that's when it's something that you know this is a problem now, right you know what i mean um so you never want to get it to a, that analytical brain to a point where it's starting to affect you like where you're so analytical that you can't even make moves anymore because mm-hmm. you're like oh no nah, they're gonna be thinking that i'm this i can't go to this spot anymore because people are going to be thinking this about me but it's like you if you went to that spot it could elevate your situation you know what i'm saying like, mm-hmm. shit like that so yeah um all right, i i feel pretty good about this conversation you know i think there there was a lot of fucking insight in here and i, I appreciate you taking the time to talk about it i feel like there there was definitely some gems all through this i, I, I hope mean, so man <laughs> I would really hope hey. so. I, I just gave some exclusive shit. So, so for your your closing words, if if you are speaking to somebody that is in a situation that is, you know, soul uh, draining, 
You know what I mean? Whatever side of the fence they they sit on right now, they're in a soul draining situation and they want to be doing something else. What would you say to them? I mean, it might sound cliche and it might sound too blunt, but nigga, stop lying to yourself, follow your heart, and just go. Dead ass. Like, like cause you lying to yourself is the worst shit you can do. And that shit that's, that, that's when that soul quenching and niggas be wondering like 20 years later yo, yo like midlife crisis and all that shit that's cause that's where it stems from like you just lying to yourself yeah bro yeah. so I just say follow your heart I'm with you man I'm with you uh do I wanna ask alright that the, the, the honesty right mm-hmm. be not lying to yourself being honest with yourself was that something that you had to, was it a process? Like, did you know, yo, I'm lying to myself or did you have to kind of like, was that a process to get there to realize that you're lying to yourself? Like if you um, don't know that you're lying to yourself, how do you figure that out? I mean, it's definitely a process. Like you really got to sit down and tell yourself like, I mean, when you're not happy, you know, you're not happy. Cause like shit just start, you just start doing weird shit. Yeah. Like it's like, I don't do this. Feel me? And then, like, eventually, hopefully, eventually, you start realizing, like, oh, okay, I'm wild. Like, that's not what I do. Like, I'm not in a, in a space of, like, I'm happy with whatever. And I think we all do, but we just choose to ignore those signs. Feel me? Right. So if you don't ignore the signs, then you'll be in this place of, all right, let me let me address the situation. Then that's when you figure out you're lying to yourself. Got so it. it's definitely, definitely, like, the signs are there. It's up to you to address it or not. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. All right, man. I appreciate you, bro. Another yes, time I'm ending this. But, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Appreciate your words. Come on, man. And My time your time, man. <laughs> you you want to you wanna shout out your social media or anything like that? You want to let niggas know where to find you? I mean, you know, just JD, J-U-S-T, J-A-Y underscore D. You know I mean? Just put in J do say it. I'll pop up too. Um, I'm around. I'll probably be in his comments. I don't know. <laughs> uh yeah for sure again my name is a Stephen dope and this is a podcast about broken dreams we're gonna find a better title we gotta figure that out but yeah word. better title and, and 40k is show next year but yeah um <laughs> 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 uh, that's a fact all right man yeah, i appreciate exactly. y'all you know, thank like you for listening and we'll catch y'all on the next one peace Thank you for listening to Ben Dope Speaks. Subscribe anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And make sure you hit me up on all socials at HD Ben Dope. Peace.